Par fives are huge opportunities to make a birdie or even use that shot that you've got in your handicap. Let me show you how. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are here on the sixth hole at Villa Sol. Arguably their signature hole of the property. It's over 500 yards. We've got water down there at around 300 off the tee. And then we've got to play into a narrowing fairway surrounded by bunkers. It's a cracking hole. It really grabs your attention off of the tee. Depending on where the wind direction is, a lot of the time will dictate your strategy, depending on what's in the fairway. This particular case, I've got a trap down there on the right hand side, as you can see from the overhead. And as I say, the water at around 300 yards. 300 yards is a big hit for me. There's a, there's a slight touch of breeze into my face, not too much. It is 7.30 in the morning and I am trying hard to bring you the best content getting out before the golfers. So give us a like and share and subscribe while you're here. I want to play this hole with you, give you some insights into what I think about when I'm playing a par five that hopefully can make you lower the score. It's an elevated tee shot. Elevated tee shots, I think you, you, it's polarized. Some people love an elevated tee shot, some people not so much, depends if the wind's blowing. I love an elevated tee shot. It feels like it can really allows me to open up my shoulders, give it a good whop. There's no, again, there's no real trouble down there. The only real trouble is, is down the left wing. There's a, there's a ditch that runs down the right, but that's not really in play for my eye. If you watch enough of my videos, again, you'll understand the driver is so dominant with heel and toe strike in the curvature that we see in the sky with the gear effect. If you are a fader of the golf ball and you want to see a draw, I would inspire working on some toe strike and vice versa. So whenever I'm standing on the tee and I'm looking to hit a good tee shot with my driver, I'm always working on where the contact should be. That's my first port of calls, always where I go to first. Then I start to drag my attention to where I want the ball to finish. Where do I want to play my next shot from that's going to give me the best opportunity to play the hole aggressively. As I say, I've got a bunker down there on the right hand side and I feel like if I was to play a draw down here, I feel like I'm going to start to turn it towards the rubbish on the left. So my sensation on this hole is I'm going to try to make a little fade down towards that bunker and hopefully I'll get it over the bunker and down in that nice pocket there. So I'm very strict with taking my line. I'll try and take a smaller target as possible. Down the left there, we've got the pond. I'm gonna try and aim just right at the pond. There's a tree. Hopefully I've got that highlighted on the overhead. That's gonna be my line. And I'm gonna try and peel it back into the fairway. Now Trackman is set up down the middle of the fairway. So all of the data will come from that preset point. So we should get the Trackman data up. Let's give it a go. Always take a look from behind. I always have my little rehearsal feeling what I want to feel. I'm always trying to make my right, my left foot light in my takeaway, using my feet well. And then I want to really feel like I've got some energy in that left foot to really post up. So down the left I go, ball forwards, little waggle, now it's go time. There she is pretty much on my start line with a touch of peel back into the fairway. Hit it slightly out the heel, which that's what it felt like. Anyway, I don't know what the Trapman data is, but certainly what it felt like. Felt a little bit trappy, but I was very, very happy with that. Wasn't my most powerful of shots. It is 7.30 in the morning and that was my first shot, so I'm gonna take that one. Let's go see where it finished. Well, I've hit myself an absolute corker. I'm not far from the drink, as you can see. It's all in the detail. Good caddy, good coach. Perfect lie, slightly on an upslope. Someone's just heard me hitting it in a perfect spot. That's the police on their way. So we've got the, 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 the hole is narrowing in, overhanging limbs. Look, I'm, I'm in the mayor's office here, as they say in Australia. Why would I not be going for it? Well, 
for me personally, three wood off the deck as a low ball hitter. I'm not someone that feels overly confident with the three wood off the deck, but it's certainly a golf club that I'm not afraid of, of using. What are my, my cautions here? Things that I'm taking into account that could make this hole go wrong. Up the left, if I catch those umbrella pines up the left hand side of this hole, I'm in some doo-doo because if that drops down, I'm then caught myself in a situation where I won't be able to get any elevation. Down the right hand side, different story. I feel like down the right hand side, because of the undulation of the ground, it feels like it would open the hole up. The bunker's down the right, there's nothing on the left. So the right again is the miss. So I'm very mindful of A, where I, again, Jack Nicholas has always talked about this, isn't he? Always work out where you want to miss the hole. But look, I'm, I'm trying to hit a great golf shot here. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hit it in the bad or, or, or miss my target. But what I am going to do is select a shot and a shot pattern that is going to lend itself that if I don't quite get it right, that it's going to put myself in a place that I'm not going to be in more trouble. Again, the good adage is where do I want to play my next shot from? Therefore, again, I'm looking for a fade. If, if I hit a draw, it's, you know, it's all gone tits up. So it, it's not going to work out well. So I've hit a really bad shot. So I can't account for that. But what I can account for is over fading it. And that's what I mean by leaving it in a position that's not going to leave me too much bother for the next shot. It's on a slight upslope, which makes me feel very happy about a low flighted three wood that I've got. My three wood is actually a five wood de-lofted to sort of around uh, 16 degrees. So it's, it's a nice, generous, but it comes out and launches pretty nicely. My line, therefore, is the overhanging limbs of those left-hand trees. So that's where I'm looking for my start line. And I'm going to try and peel it back into the, into the fairway. Again, I always have my usual waggle back here. I'm just trying to feel left foot is light in my backswing because I want to use my right foot to make my right hip rotate. And then I'm going to use the energy that I've thrust into my left foot to extend the leg and spin my top half around. Do check out my you must pull video because that will give you insights into what I'm just talking about there. So take my intermediate target Get ourselves lined up here. There's my waggle. And as usual, it's go time. Oh man, I have hit an absolute perler there. So it started just a hair right of my start line, just a hair, but it had that peel. That's as good a three wood as I got, fractionally low off the face, so it might not have had masses of distance, but I'm certainly in a, in a good place. I felt very good about that shot. Let's go see where it ended up. Cracker of a second shot. We're just shy of the green. It's a 550 yard par five. I'm pleased with that. 300 off the tee, 250. I'm certainly no John Rahm, but I'm in a, in a really good spot. Now look, I appreciate that you might not be in this spot here but you'd like to think that you have chosen and selected with the help of my channel, hit the fairway and you hit your second shot within a hundred yards. Most of you out there over two shots can hit it 400, 450. So therefore your second shot or third shot rather is gonna be inside a hundred. And so we're gonna talk about this, you're inside a hundred and the relevance of it over our time here at the wonderful Villa Sol. But we've got ourselves a nice little chip shot up the green. There's a few things that you want to take into consideration when you're playing a chip shot. I mean, it looks all fairly straightforward, doesn't it? First of all, I always want to assess the lie. The lie is an absolute perler. Got no issues there. I could play a high lobber. I could play a five iron, anything. So therefore, the lie is giving me maximum opportunity to play whatever shot I want. So now as we had take a walk up the green here, and we start to investigate what the green is offering us or taking away. The green is sat at me. So we've got a bit of an upslope here and then the, the green is slightly over a crest and down the other side. 
So immediately my thoughts are that when I hit this chip shot, even as good as these greens are, it's gonna, be, and it's a little bit moist in the morning, you know, the greens are soft, it's gonna feel like the green is gonna take energy away. So therefore I need to put energy in to the chip shot when I select my golf club, because I don't want to feel like from four paces off of the green that I've got to put a lot of swing in here. I'm trying to make this job super easy for myself. Now, I am certainly not the kind of guy that would want to putt this. Now, depending on how you feel with your chipping, you might want to opt for the putter. But I've opted for a 54. I could easily use a 58, but I've got my 54 because that feels like that's going to... Do you know what? I'm not even going to take the 54. I'm going to take the wedge out because it feels like, which is at 46 degrees, it feels like that's gonna give me just a little bit more. So I've come down pretty much 10 degrees. I've gone from 54 to 46, pitching wedge. This is gonna give me the best chance to get the ball running up the green with, with a little bit of pace. Now I'm starting to read it like a putt. Because as soon as that ball touches the ground, it's no longer a chip shot, right? I mean, it's, it's fairly simple stuff. It's not rocket science. But hopefully, just by talking you through the lie and assessing the, the shot, what goes through a good player's mind of how they're to selecting the club. So often you'll see guys and girls just pull a club out, they haven't even got to the golf ball yet, and they're, and they're already into the shot. I'm now seeing a little bit of right to left break and then perhaps a little bit of left to right at the end. So again, because of the pace the ball's gonna be coming in at, I'm not gonna really read too much into that, so I'm gonna hit it pretty straight. Again, I'm now into my my chipping video so i'm feeling the handle and the head feel like that they've got the very similar speed to each other and then here we go so you could see when i played that chip shot even though i'm using a 50 a 46 degree wedge as soon as it pitched in there it looked like it dug in and run up the green didn't it i'm going to go again i'm going to grab myself another golf ball and I'm now going to go to my eight iron. So even going from 54 down to 46, it still made me feel like I've got to hit the ball really quite hard. So now I've got my eight iron out. It's still, I'm still looking. I would never want to hit a chip shot where it feels like I need to worry about how it's going to react on the fringe. Look how much easier that was. All of a sudden, it's like, as soon as it touched the ground, it was like, boom, it's off, wasn't it? So I've hit a great tee shot. I've hit a great second shot. And I've made a right balls up of my chip. <laughs> and I haven't got a birdie chance. I've got like, what are we here? 15 feet. Let's take a walk up the green, Laura. Let's go and have a putt. So we take a walk up the green. I played two sh chip shots. One was poop, <laughs> one was better. The first one has left me 15 feet. 15 feet, three, six, nine, 12 feet. I've got small feet. This is not really a birdie opportunity. It's a bit too far away, especially from being so close to the green. And so I've made five. Hideous, really, after how good I was off the tee and how good I was with my second shot. Therefore, the devil's in the detail, people. The chip shot was ultimately the way I was gonna progress on to making a birdie, not really how well I hit it off the tee and out of the fairway. I think you'll find that's good coaching, my friends. If you've liked this video, do hit the like, share and subscribe, and I will see you next time.